Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. Alexandria Mayor Jock Roy updates us today on the state of the city. The key points from his yearly address in our top story tonight. I'm happy to report the state of Alexandria is fiscally and operationally sound. It is, in fact, as was stated last year, in as good a position financially and set up for growth as it has enjoyed since the 1900s. We have a stable regional economy, a fairly robust city economy, and an enviable budgetary and financial position, which you'll hear more about uh, in the upcoming weeks as financial reports are given. The problem is you cannot say the same for our state, and you certainly cannot say that about the state of the federal government. And that has an effect on us, and it has a material effect, and it can alter the course of what we do. Although the mayor says Alexandria is in a good position financially and operationally, he stated that he worries about what's happening nationally. He spoke about division throughout the nation and defeating the issue with togetherness, asking the public to engage in an individual commitment in their lives to, quote, not be us and them. Also today, Dr. Lauren Scott presented the 2018 through 2019 Louisiana Economic Outlook at the North Rapids Business and Industry Alliance luncheon. Dr. Scott has a positive outlook for the city of Alexandria over the next two years. I think over the next two years, you're going to see a reversal in your trend. You've been in a kind of a negative employment trend for the last uh, three years, and I think that's going to turn around and start to grow again. The, the closure of England Air Force Base, if you go back and look at what we had forecast was going to happen as a result of that, turned out to be it's, it's the worst forecast we've ever made because what you folks did in this community, really under the leadership of an engineer by the name of Jim Myers, was you guys got control of the Air Force Base, got control of its assets, and started using it to bring in industry. And it did a very good job of that. And so in terms, instead of losing like a decade of employment when that happened, uh, you actually grew and grew a little bit faster. Early this morning, a single vehicle crash killed a pedestrian from Jonesville in Catahoula Parish. Troopers say 35-year-old Johnny Stewart Jr. died when he was walking on the shoulder of Highway 84 was hit by a man driving a car who had lost control and crossed the white fog line. Last week, two bodies were discovered in a roadside ditch fire on Old Boyce Road. That investigation is still ongoing. A spokesman involved with the case says there is no new additional information being released at this time, but they are getting close to being able to provide some more details. Natchitoches police report two children were injured by gunfire yesterday afternoon in the area of Reba Street. They say a five-year-old was shot in the lower calf and a three-year-old sustained an injury to her foot. That gunfire also damaged apartments as well as three vehicles. The investigation is underway. Grant deputies arrest a woman who they say misspent funds from the Pollock Dogwood Festival. She's 51-year-old Susan Oates of Pollock, charged with theft of more than $5,000 and 14 counts of forgery. Oates had been president of the festival. We are looking ahead to some more great fall weather. Let's get a first look at our forecast now with meteorologist Ross Whitley. Yeah, that's right, Scott. Beautiful weather out there today and more in the forecast over the next seven days. 76 degrees today. We should be right at 77, so one degree below average for this time of year and 48 last night. And it could be cooler tonight as we go forward and thankfully not going to be seeing any kind of records here is so at least as far as our high temperatures go. But as we head to the weekend, we could have a temperature resembling something of that number as another cold front will bring us another chance of rain and much colder air. Of course, I'll have all the details about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Ross. Just two months after southeast Louisiana was hit with historic flooding, floodwaters have returned. In the Baton Rouge area, water was at knee level in some parts. Rescue crews helped people escape from those rising waters. Many of the area's homes had just been rebuilt or were in the process of being rebuilt. Meanwhile, flames ripped through a Louisiana home with a woman and four children inside, killing the two youngest. Fire officials say this fire broke out early yesterday in Gretna. A grandmother was able to get two older kids out to safety. Jefferson Parish officials say the woman told them she was unable to reach two eight-year-olds, who neighbors say were blind. The cause of that blaze is still under investigation, but the fire marshal believes it may have been an electrical fire that started in the kitchen. The Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry brought in a group of fifth graders to teach them about the science of the forest. 
ABC 31 Char Thomas has our story. This morning, Sinlaw fifth graders stepped away from their science books and stepped into the Kincaid Forest to learn more about forestry. The students learned about forest utilization and how it relates to their everyday lives. There are thousands of products such as lumber, plywood, and other natural products that can be used for our survival, providing us with food and shelter. Bobby Carter Sr., a retiree of the NRCS, demonstrated and created hands-on activities for the fifth graders, and he also explained the importance of outdoors. Well, we just here to teach them about the natural resources, the importance of it. Uh, some of the kids doesn't even have a clue idea of where the food comes from. First of all, it wasn't important for the soil. We have to have that soil there in order to produce any uh, food or any crop that we're going to produce. And I also uh, uh, make them realize that it's very important that the clothing they wear, the things that they share during their classroom experience, their desks, their papers, everything that we use has to come first by way of the soil. And it's very important to them some hadn't even experienced outdoors. Jeff Zarain, media specialist, says he hopes the students take away a better appreciation for the forest. They leave, they can see that just because a tree is cut down doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Um, there's not really deforestation, and they hear in news reports and things like that. But uh, for every tree that was harvested, they'll plant at least two in its place, so there are more trees growing all the time. Students got to visit seven different stations where they got to learn more about the science of the forest in detail. Char Thomas, ABC 31 News. Spa Beliza, located off Jackson Street in Alexandria, was joined by the Sentinel Chamber of Commerce Friday for a celebration. The spa recently underwent a remodel and marked the occasion with a ribbon cutting. The event also included live music, giveaways, and specials. LSUA's annual Trick or Treat Street is coming up this week. We've been doing it for a number of years, uh, and we invite everybody in the community to come out and uh, bring their children, dress them up. You can be dressed up as well, um, and trick-or-treat uh, throughout the streets of LSUA. It's a great, fun, safe trick-or-treating environment, um, and it will be Thursday, October the 26th, starting at 5 o'clock, 5 until 8. Uh, people though, do start lining up early, so you may want to get there a little early, um, and we do take cash only. It's $3 per person. You can visit lsua.edu and click on the events tab to find out more. A new feature film, American Made, has some ties to a former reporter in Baton Rouge. WBRZ's John Pastoric has the story. I'm the pilot who snapped the picture, Seal said after playing the video. It's the biggest case in DEA's history. John Camp wrote about Barry Seal. He investigated Barry Seal. He knew Barry Seal. Who was the real Barry Seal? Barry Seal was a guy that basically needed a lot of attention. He was, uh, you know, like a television reporter. He just liked to be in the spotlight. And he was an adventurer who would basically take all sorts of gambles to uh, bring attention to himself. Their paths crossed in the 1980s when Camp was an award-winning investigative reporter for WBRZ, sealed the subject of two Camp documentaries, Uncle Sam Wants You and Murder of a Witness. A Here's an excerpt when Seal takes Camp plane. aboard his plane it called the Fat Lady and, and inside the world of animated. his drug smuggling Robot operation. Got the airplane completely ready to go in about five minutes before departure time. The Army brought in the uh, truckloads, the duffel bags full of cocaine, and they were loaded on board the aircraft by the Cuban and Sandinista soldiers. Barry Seal, by and large, was just a smuggler who got caught and was trying to save his butt. And it was a big butt. My name's Barry Seal. Now Hollywood's version of the Barry Seal saga with the movie American Made. Tom Cruise playing the lead role. See, I'm gonna walk out of here. <laughs> I read a damn thing. Any one of you can do about it. Well, my wife had to keep grabbing my arm to stop me from leaving. It's difficult to sit and watch a movie that uh, you know the real facts. Tom Cruise's Barry Seal and the real Barry Seal. 
Are they very much alike? There's no physical similarity between Tom Cruise and uh, Barry Seal. Cruise did kind of capture the smile a little bit, uh, and maybe some of the arrogance in Barry's uh, personality, which is what got him killed. John Camp retired from investigative reporting in 2002. 2004, he and his wife moved to the beautiful rolling hills of St. Francisville for the peace and quiet. But today, it's anything but peace and quiet. With the release of the Tom Cruise movie, Camp's back in the spotlight with a renewed interest and curiosity in Barry Seal. And the resurrection of the Barry Seal story has also resurrected interest in Camp's documentaries and his book, Odyssey of a Derelict Gunslinger. I have now uh, built up enough book royalties that I can afford to uh, go to Starbucks. Barry Seal's end came in 1986 when he was assassinated outside of a Baton Rouge halfway house. And Cam says, despite the movie and renewed interest in the Seal saga, he believes history won't be as kind as Hollywood. Barry Seal has almost become a myth. John Pasterek, WBRZ News 2. Predators better pray. Crime Watch Daily airs weekdays at 3 on KLAX TV. Download the KLAX weather app for your smartphone or tablet. Get live current conditions, radar maps, alerts, and more. More ways to stay connected with KLAX TV. Hi, I'm meteorologist Ross Whitley, checking out the surface map across the country, and we got a lot going on out there. Our rainmaker from yesterday now moving up into Kentucky and eventually into the Great Lakes, and the cold front associated with it did bring us some drier, cooler air today, but there's actually another cold front on the way and another one behind that, but this is the cold front we'll be watching for this part of the week, and you can see the darker shades of green here pushing southward, and this is going to continue to move across central Arkansas through Texas and then down in our direction. That's going to bring us another dose of cooler, drier air and then set the stage for even colder air to come in by the end of the week. And of course, that also means that we're going to see a little bit of rain out there with another cold front. This one will be dry, but the next one probably going to bring us another round of rain, which is good news. We do actually need a little bit of rain out there, and we got some yesterday. 76 degrees for the day today. Average for this time of year is 77, so we'll take it. Natchez at 72, Monroe at 75, and Natchitoches at 76. All of us sitting in the 70s. When was the last time we could say that? And beautiful weather continuing overnight. 51 degrees and clear out there tonight. The winds out of the west northwest at about six miles per hour. Just more beautiful conditions on the way as we go throughout the next couple days. Now that cold front does move through tomorrow, and with that, we'll actually be breezy at times. We could have winds gusting upwards of 20 miles per hour for throughout the day tomorrow. But plenty of sunshine, still very pleasant and that's going to continue as we work throughout the end of the week as well before we see another cold front work in. So that cold air does move in for the day tomorrow. The cold front, basically where you see the blue there, will push through tomorrow. That'll bring some breezy conditions at times. But other than that, very, very nice out there across the southeast. And then we got a whole lot going on by the end of the week. High pressure system still in control by the end of the week, but this is the next cold front. And you see the big dip in the jet stream here. This is going to be bringing not cooler air, but cold air across the southeast and really into the middle part of the country. We're going to be seeing a lot of places well below average as opposed to even just getting to average, which is where we are right now. And now we're going to see some below average air make its way into our area. We could actually be looking at the potential for the first frost and freeze as we move into the weekend, even way down here in Louisiana. So that's the colder air that is moving in our direction. Forecast highs for the day tomorrow 74 degrees, clear, present, but breezy at times. And looking at our extended forecast, there's the cooler air moving in Wednesday, only getting to 69 degrees, then back up to 77 in front of another cold front, then only getting to 60 on Saturday. And yes, you are looking at that overnight low correctly. Saturday night of 33 degrees, we could be seeing frost and freezes. Of course, we'll have more on that as we get closer to it. That's a look at your seven day and your weather forecast. Scott. All right, thanks, Ross. If you're putting on the perfect finishing touches to your Halloween costume, there's one you might want to be aware of that could come with some scary consequences. With more, here's Serena Marshall. 
The slit-like eyes of a cat or the bright red glare of a demon. Decorative contact lenses are a popular Halloween accessory. Easy to find, inexpensive, and wow, what a look. You may see them marketed as cosmetic, theatrical, costume, or colored contact lenses. They don't correct your vision, they're just for fun. But please, eye doctors beg, look away unless you're getting them through a medical source. You could get more than you bargained for. Eye ulcers, corneal abrasions, eye infections, even blindness. All possible consequences that arise from the use of these lenses, according to the American Academy of Ophthalmology. The CDC considers all contact lenses to be medical devices, devices they say require a prescription, whether or not they're used to correct vision. So any contact lenses sold without a prescription are sold illegally. Yes, of course, it's a great Halloween idea, but talk to your eye doctor first. You want your contact lenses, even just decorative ones, to be a prescription and legal, lest you want to find that those Halloween horrors can be permanent. With this Medical Minute, I'm Serena Marshall. To you, it's just an old coat. But to an underprivileged child, it's a warmer winter. Please help us collect coats for kids before the cold months get here. You can drop off new or gently used coats at a location near you. All coats are cleaned and distributed right here in our community. The KLAX Coats for Kids Drive is sponsored by First Federal Bank, Southern Heritage Bank, Bank of Montgomery, Kramer Funeral Home, Take 5 Oil Change, South Park Cleaners, and LaSalle Printing and Office Supply. Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Nick Frank. It was another tough Saturday for the NSU football team. A 45-17 loss on homecoming. Saying the name is to 1-6 on the year and just 1-4 in, in conference play. Coach Thomas is just happy that his demons finally won't be seeing another ranked team this weekend. It certainly is going to be different. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's been a tough stretch for us. And when you go back and look at, you know, the folks that we've had to play, really good football teams, um, very talented, very well coached. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. Wait, 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 whoa! <laughs> oh, I can't get enough of this video. Right This Minute is TV's number one daily viral video show. Right This Minute. Watch Right This Minute, weekdays at 5 on KLAX TV. KLAX is the exclusive provider of ABC and MeTV programming here in Central Louisiana. We're the only station where you can watch new ABC programs like Dancing with the Stars, Designated Survivor, and Grey's Anatomy, just to name a few. That's what family does. We take care of each other. I'm proud of you. The warmth of your love. And if classic TV programs like Bonanza, Andy Griffin, Batman, or Carol Burnett is more your style, then MeTV's the station for you. As an advertiser, you want your products and services presented to these loyal viewers. Our sales team is equipped to prove we can generate new customers and new revenue for your business. I'll tell you what, it pays to advertise. And we have a number of low-risk advertising programs designed to prove we work. Call our media consultant team today for a no-risk assessment on how we can help you grow your business. We're ready to prove we work. <laughs>